Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for 45,000 tech industry folks and customers with Amazon reInvent 2017. It's theCUBE's exclusive coverage. I'm John Furrier, with my co-host Justin Moore in this segment. Our next guest, Bill Magro, who's the chief technologist for Intel covering HPC, high performance computing. Bill, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks oh, for thank coming you. on. Very much. You guys, your boots behind us, I don't know if they can see it on the wide shot, but Intel is really taking advantage of the uh, I don't want to say Intel inside the cloud, because that's really what you guys are doing, but you got so much compute. This is your wheelhouse. Compute yeah. is what Intel is. Right. <laughs> Andy Jassy and AWS talking with their customers. They want more compute, edge of the network. So HPC, high performance computing, has been around for a while. What's the state of the art, and how should people think about HPC versus the cloud? Are they the same? What's the relationship? Well, uh, Intel actually thinks of HPC or high performance computing more in terms of the ac activity and the workloads than the infrastructure that it runs on. So very early in the days of cloud computing, there were a lot of people who said that, um, that the cloud was kind of um, uh, the opposite of HPC and therefore they could never go together. But we think of cloud as a delivery vehicle, a way to get access to compute, storage, networking, and HPC is what you're doing. And so then if you think about HPC as kind of a range of workloads, you can start to think about which ones are a good fit for the cloud and which ones aren't. So we talk a little bit uh, about the um, you know, high performance computing and tailored infrastructure for the most extreme cases of HPC. That's where you see the biggest differences with cloud because they're at opposite ends of the spectrum. But you see holistically the cloud is interplaying with HPC. Yeah. They're not mutually exclusive. Absolutely, we see cloud as a way to deliver HPC yeah. capabilities. So if you think of the most demanding HPC problems, um, the ones that are used in uh, national security, they're used to design commercial airplanes, uh, and so on, yeah. those are some of the hardest problems. Predicting the climate change, um, yeah. predicting the weather, paths of hurricanes. Those are what we call grand challenge problems. Those are not running in the cloud. Those are running on dedicated, tailored infrastructure built for high performance computing at that extreme. And those systems have a lot of characteristics such as very high performance networks, uh, different from ethernet, uh, custom topologies, um, and, and are designed with software to really minimize variation because it's one large problem that has to move forward. The cloud is kind of the opposite in a sense. It started as taking a large amount of resources and making it possible to carve them up, right? It's the opposite of aggregating resources. And so that's where a lot of the early thoughts of cloud and HPC being kind of at odds it with each other. It seems to be a dream yeah. scenario because, um, I mean, in the old days, in the 80s and 90s when I was breaking into the business, if you were a database guy or a compute guy, you were a specialist. It was high-end kind of computing. Moore's right. Law, certainly Intel, you guys took advantage of it. But now you see so much, it's cool to do more compute. So like, mm -hmm. it's been democratized. So right. databases and compute, right. certainly in all the conversations. Right. For everybody, not just the tech, tech uh, technologists. Right. Well, that, that's where cloud fits in for HPC. So if you think of HPC in terms of it, the characteristics of the workload, it's something that's really demanding computationally. Um, the product of the computation is like an intellectual insight. You, 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 know, you can design a better airplane wing, a safer car. You can figure out where that hurricane is going and tell which people to evacuate. There's an intellectual product to the compute. And then the last characteristic is when you apply more, com more compute power appropriately, you get a more valuable result. So it could be better prediction of that hurricane path. It could be a safer car because you had more time, uh, you, you had more capability and were able to build a better design ahead of that deadline to get the, that model year of the car out. Um, yeah. Right, and so if you think about that, there's a lot, there's a broad spectrum, and I talked about some of those most extreme problems, but even in something like designing an airplane, there might be 16, 20, 100 different small design variations you want to explore. Well, those can actually be great for the cloud because they're small calculations and you run many of them at the same time, and the elastic capability of the cloud augments the supercomputer that you might be using to run so your hardest problems. the aperture yeah. of problem solving is huge now. That's right. You That's can do right. more. I mean, we had Thorne on yesterday, Thorne was a company that didn't partners oh, okay. with Intel to do, you know, find missing and exploited children. AI for good. Yeah, so that's, everything's possible. Yeah, even AI we think of as an example of a high performance computing workload because what does it do? It, it gives you insights that you didn't have otherwise. Uh, it's compute intensive and it, and it does better when you apply more resources. So that fits our definition. So AI is definitely under the umbrella. 
of high performance well, computing. One of the things, that, uh, one of the great benefits of cloud is the elasticity, which you mentioned right. before. It's like, and some of the, uh, we know Amazon's just brought out the C5 instance, which is a specific instance type, which would be quite useful for HPC. Right. But what is it about the bursting workloads or that, that elasticity that specifically uh, works well for HPC, do you think? Well, there's a couple use cases that we think are particularly relevant. Um, one of them is an existing company. Just imagine some Fortune 50 manufacturer. Um, they have a lot of stuff that they really need to build their own supercomputer for, their own high performance computing system. But their, their usage, even though they keep that system busy all the time, there is some variability. And they have the opportunity cost of an engineer sitting while their job is in a queue. Because yeah. you're paying that engineer, but you're not giving them insights, right? And so the cloud can augment that. And we have a lot of examples of, of large uh, Fortune 500, Fortune 50 companies augmenting their on-premise with cloud as a way to push those, those workloads that can run on the cloud there to free up those on-prem resources which are much more tailored, much more expensive, and get more value out of them. Okay, and what, what's Intel doing to help customers figure out which of those workloads is best suited for, for cloud and which ones are, are better suited for something which is running on site? Well, it's, it's mostly through our, our influencer sales force who engages with, with many, many major companies and provides consulting because Intel doesn't sell uh, computers directly to anyone so it's, yeah. it's more of a knowledge uh, you know, our knowledge and, and sharing that with people and what we're trying to help uh, enterprises understand is is what workloads you know need to stay on premise which ones can go to the cloud and how this the elasticity of the cloud can augment those on-premise resources and thus you know yeah. back and forth it's the so, classic mission for Intel make the apps go faster right. faster smaller cheaper right I mean. yeah, and get them land in the right place so um, really the two biggest considerations we find in deciding whether a workload goes into the cloud or stays on premise in high performance computing are the following one is is really the sensitivity of the IP there's a lot of workloads that could run in the cloud and people simply want to keep it on premise because they're more comfortable knowing that their IP is sitting inside their own firewall. Though the reality is more and more companies are getting comfortable with cloud security as they see data breaches yeah. and realize that some of the big cloud providers like Amazon maybe have better access to the security talent than, I mean, than they do. Goldman Sachs just announced they're going all in. Say, That's yeah. Goldman Sachs, they never do right. testimonial. Right. So, so the privacy and the sensitivity of the data is, is, is king. You, know, you have to be willing to put it in the cloud. Then the second question is, is it a technical fit, and that's where this spectrum of workloads comes in. Um, the bigger a workload goes, and the more you want to speed it up, but keep the workload the same size, that's what we call strong scaling, and that starts to stress the network and stress the system, and that's where these tailored systems come in, yeah. and so you have to look at where things fall on the spectrum. Um, a good example of workloads that would fit is these design space explorations, um, anything we would call pleasingly parallel or embarrassingly parallel in the industry, where the communication uh, does happen, but it's not the limiter of the calculation. So uh, screening for uh, uh, drug, drug candidates for personalized medicine, uh, a lot of life sciences applications, financial services is a good fit in manufacturing, uh, design space exploration, maybe for you know, different designs and materials uh, for, for a dashboard or a component of a car. Yeah. Bill, when you were at your Thanksgiving dinners and your family or wherever you're, you're moving around your personal life, you're a technologist. Right. How do you explain the phenomenon of Amazon Web Services in the cloud action right now? Because you know, you're in it every day, you're close to all the action, but I, I get asked all the time, what's the hubbub about AWS? And it's hard to explain the phenomenon. Right, How it would is. you describe the, I mean, you're talking about tailored systems, elasticity, I right. mean, it's a tech dream. Right. I mean, how do you explain it to like a normal person? Well, you, uh, the conversation's usually pretty short because my family involves a historian, an English major, <laughs> an accountant, and people who really couldn't have a, uh, the, a musician, um, a singer, people who really don't have the slightest interest in Hard technology. Hard to talk about Lambda when yeah. you're... Uh, so I'm really the only technologist in my family, so I just avoid it. But um, the question does come up with my parents. You know, parents like to brag on their kids, so they like to know what you do. And every, yeah. Every year my mom asks me what I do and I try to explain high performance computing to her and, and she says, oh, I don't get it. But, but when you explain it in terms of things like climate modeling and uh, being able to support the nuclear test ban that's worldwide, that's done with high performance computing. You know, safing cars, finding missing children. Yeah. Um, you know, better quality of life through all the AI that we're now experiencing. Analytics is a great um, use case. Then people say, yeah. oh, you know, they, they can understand the use cases. Uh, the elasticity of the cloud, um, really is not something that, that I discuss with family, but uh, even coworkers, I think, um, you know, that's what the conversation focuses on, recognizing that high performance computing is a range of workloads. Okay, so they'll all very phrase it differently. What's your fit? perspective on, what observations that you get excited about that are enabled now by these new use cases? What are, because there's new things now that are oh, possible. Yeah, okay. the, yeah. compu the number of computations, you got analytics, you mentioned a few of them. Right, right. What jumps out at you, wow, that's really awesome, we could do that You now. know, this is going to sound um, a little, um, 
odd and maybe not what you expected, but I'm not actually a technology enthusiast, believe it or not, despite. Um, I think technology is yeah. cool, I like what it does, but I don't, I don't get super excited about technology. Um, one of the, the things that I'm excited about the cloud is probably at the opposite extreme of what you would expect, which is back to you know, how does the elasticity of the cloud uh, fit. There's so many companies in this world who could benefit from high performance computing and don't today. Um, a recent study showed that 95% of U.S. Manu small medium manufacturers, um, which is over 300,000, are not using HPC today. Yeah. Right. And so, as they're part of this supply chain, whether it's into a Boeing or an Airbus or a, a Lockheed Martin or a, you know a Honda or a Toyota, there's this whole supply chain. HPC is being used at the top; it's not being used at the bottom. So, I think the cloud is actually really, really exciting because it allows somebody to get over those initial hurdles, the capex, um, you know, getting access to pay-as-you-go, prove the value proposition. Uh, because a small medium business actually has to take a risk to use HPC. Yeah, they have okay. to divert capital and divert resources and they could lose a contract. So do you see a lot more companies starting to take advantage of, of some of this high performance computing capability just because it's now, you can rent it by the hour and yeah, try it out, exactly. give it a bit of a whirl and then see actually this is going to be really valuable for us and then deploy yes, exactly, a lot more of it. Exactly, yeah, and that's okay. one of the key things we're promoting is because we want to bring more people into the world of high performance computing. So AWS um, provides all the building blocks, you know, compute, elastic storage, and so on, but high performance computing applications really expect a specific type of platform that they can run on. Uh, and that platform aggregates the resources. So there's a number of companies, uh, Rescale is one, um, Cycle Computing, uh, and, and others who, who are actually providing that platform layer. And then once you've got the platform layer, all the, I'll call it the, uh, the geeky stuff of AWS is abstracted away, yeah. and now the applications can run, and that's, that's what's bringing new users in. Bill, final question for you. AWS launched a C5 instance. What's that about? What's it mean for customers? Can you explain a little bit more on that one sure, piece? Sure, uh, we're, we're delighted to see Amazon uh, deploying the C5 instance. It's based on our, our latest technology in the Xeon product family. Uh, we call that the Intel Xeon Scalable Processor family. Um, it includes, uh, it's based on what we call Skylake technology or code name Skylake. And um, there's a lot of innovations in that processor and that platform that are, that are specifically driven by the needs of high performance computing. Uh, there's something called AVX 512, which is a doubling of the vector width. Uh, means that every core can actually do 32 floating point, double precision 30 floating point operations per clock. Yep. Uh, that's tremendous, tremendous compute capability in a 2X over the previous generation. Uh, on the memory bandwidth side, which is another huge factor for high performance computing applications, um, like 66% increase in memory bandwidth. So it's a balanced platform, and we're seeing uh, improvements in high performance computing apps of anywhere from like 1.7x, sometimes up to almost 5x improvement yeah. uh, in going from the C4 to C5 instance on a per node basis. I mean, so. this is going to really enable a lot of action. IoT, Tons of great stuff. Absolutely, yeah. and, and as I talked about that range of HPC and, and you know, what fits and what doesn't fit in the cloud, um, every, every generation of technology, what fits in the cloud is growing, and C5 is another important step in that direction. Bill, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Bill Mungar, Chief Technologist at Intel, HPC, High Performance Computing. The cloud is one big high performance machine in the sky, wherever you want to look <laughs> at it. It's really great opportunity enabling all new use cases, doing things for society benefits and, and customers. Uh, great stuff here. Cloud impact is significant, IOT to the cloud. This is theCUBE, doing our share here at AWS in Las Vegas. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break. <laughs>